Hello and welcome to the Daily Reflection for Tuesday the 2nd of April. And this reflection is an exploration of power and influence. Who or what has influenced you over the course of your life, I wonder? Perhaps family, education, maybe even specific teachers, church, friends, especially in those crucial teenage years. People often adopt their ideas and way of life due to some influence, whether that be good or ill. Others have thrown it over and have quite determinedly taken a different path. To be an influencer is a new career these days. It's been invented relatively recently. You don't seem to need any qualifications, mainly skills in self-promotion using social media. You have to have the personality to persuade others that what you do, how you dress, the music you like, is the height of fashion and is to be emulated. Apparently, this career is very lucrative, from advertising revenues and sponsorships. It relies on the tendency of many people to want to belong to an in-crowd. And many people are looking for someone to follow. Perhaps they themselves struggle to decide their own direction in life, and their biggest fear is being left out or being seen as countercultural. They want to fit in, to be acceptable, or even on the cutting edge of the latest trends. Over Holy Week and Easter, I have found myself reflecting on Jesus, thinking about the difference between influence and power. Jesus influenced others by his actions and the way he treated people. But a characteristic of his teaching was that he provoked people to think for themselves. His parables didn't give neat answers. You had to wrestle with them. He invited all to be his followers, but acknowledged that some would reject him. Some would find it too difficult. Talk of losing your life in order to gain it and taking up your cross, the cost of discipleship, would be too much for some. He treated people with respect as self-determining individuals who would have to make their own decision in response to his invitation. And that invitation is not to follow the crowd, but to stand out from it, to be countercultural where necessary, to turn into an influencer yourself, salt and light in the community, beacons of light and hope for others by loving and serving, practicing kindness, living with integrity and a moral compass, being grace-filled and ever more Christ-like. But if all we had was the influence of Christ, we would not be firing on all our cylinders as Christians. The resurrection of Jesus takes things to a new level. We live not just under the influence of Christ, but by his power. When Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit, he referred to this as being clothed with power from on high. When we look at what the early disciples did in the power of the Spirit, it is absolutely awesome. They turned from being fearful and dejected into a dynamic group of preachers and evangelists who reached the whole known world with the gospel. Acts chapter 4 describes this. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. In these post-Easter days then, what would happen if we prayed for that same power as St. Paul put it in his letter to the Philippians? I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection. To pray that God's grace might be powerfully at work in us and that we might be powerful not timid witnesses to the new life and hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Our world in which battles for power dominate the news, threaten our security, destroy lives and create many casualties, 
needs the grace-filled power of God to bring change to every human heart. So let us pray. May the power which raised Jesus Christ from the dead be at work in my life, full of grace, full of love, and in our suffering world, Lord, may the powerless be uplifted and abusive powers dethroned. In the name of Christ. Amen.